Okay, today we're going to talk about equivalent fractions, 4.3. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about mainly reducing fractions, okay, reducing fractions to the lowest terms. Um, there'll be some other things that we'll do as well, but the main thing we're going to focus on is creating equivalent fractions by reducing to lowest terms. Now, what lowest terms means is, is that the numerator and denominator do not share a common factor. Okay, um, For example, if I had 32 over 72, now remember, this should be basic understanding, but the top number is the num numerator, the bottom number is the denominator. Okay, and so we're looking, and when we're looking at numerator and denominator, we need to find a common factor, preferably the greatest common factor between the two numbers. Okay, uh, do what? So when you divide it, making an equivalent fraction means that you have to take a number and divide it by the top and by the bottom, the same exact number. In other words, I can't take 72 and divide it by 9 and then take 8 and divide it into 32. That doesn't make an equivalent fraction. That's a totally different fraction that's not equivalent. So any time that you're trying to make an equivalent fraction, as long as you either divide it by the same number or multiply it by the same number, you're still going to have an equivalent fraction. When we reduce this one, if we divide 8 into 32, that goes 4 times. 8 into 72 goes 9 times. So that's in simplest form. also known as lowest terms. Okay, Our other fraction is another way to make an equivalent fraction, but to increase the numbers in the fraction. So obviously 3 times 32 is going to be 96. 3 times 72 is going to be 216. So 96 over 216, these two fractions are equivalent to each other. Okay. They are also obviously equivalent to the first fraction we started with, 32 over 72. Now, for you to understand when you reduce, when you enlarge, then that's where the word simplest form comes into. Um, if they tell you to write the fraction in simplest form, then that's when you're going to reduce it. Um, a lot of times in this particular lesson, they're going to ask you to give them two fractions. Okay. Well, there's two fractions. Okay, um, I could also, you know, the thing you need to understand when you're increasing it, you know, I could multiply it times any number, okay? I could take and multiply it by 4 times 4 over 4. The main thing is, is that this number, whatever you're multiplying it by or whatever you're dividing it by, must equal 1. 4 over 4, 5 over 5, a million over a million, okay? It must equal 1. It can't be one number on top and a different number on bottom. That is not, you can't do that, okay? So, when we're creating equivalent fractions, for example, let's say I give you 25 over 120, okay? I need to create... Two equivalent fractions. Okay, I need to create two equivalent fractions. So first of all, I'm going to simplify. Okay, 
So I'm going to take 25 over 120, and I'm going to reduce it. Okay. What is the greatest common factor between 25 and 120, Nicole? You sure? All right. Just making sure. So we're going to divide the fraction by 5. 5 on top, 5 on bottom. Okay? So 5 goes into 25 five times. Okay? 5 goes into 120 how many times? 24. So my first fraction is 5 over 24. Okay? To make my second fraction... I need to multiply. So I'm going to take 25 over 120. Now, to increase the numbers in the fraction, we are going to multiply by 2 over 2. Okay, to, so on, on tonight's homework, for you to create two equivalent fractions, one that's smaller, one that's larger, for the larger one, I want you to multiply by 2 over 2. Okay, you could multiply by 3 over 3, 4 over 4, 5 over 5. So to keep us all having the same answer, we're just going to multiply by 2 over 2. Okay, so when I take and multiply by 2 over 2, well, 2 times 25 is 50, 2 times 120 is 240. Okay, so my two answers, 5 over 24 and 50 over 240, and that's your answer. That's two equivalent fractions to the given fraction of 25 over 120. Okay? So I want you to take and do this one on your own. 30 over 52, and I want two equivalent fractions. All right, what is the reduced one? Uh, let's see here, Derek. 15 over 26, that is correct. So, Derek, what did you divide by to get the 15 over 26? Right. So we divided by 2 over 2, and that created 15 over 26. Now, the second fraction... So that's my first answer. Second one would be what? Tamara. Right. 60, we multiplied by 2 over 2, and that gives me 60 over 104. Okay, so the two together are your answers. You must have both of them. Okay? Now, um... In the book, you know, the odd, odd answers are in the back of the book, so some of these will be a little different because the book doesn't always, you know, just multiply straight by 2 over 2. Okay, so understand that when you look in the back of the book, one of them may be off, and you're not going to really be able to tell that unless, you know, you just happen to understand what they've multiplied by. All right, now, once you take 49 over 105, and reduce to simplest form.
Okay, reduce that to simplest form. When you have the answer, raise your hand. Hey, Tristan, what'd you get? Um, 15. I mean, uh, I got 7 over 15. Yes, 7 over 15. Now, what well, we reduce by, the only factors of 49 are 1, 7, and 49. So either 7's got to go into it or it, it, it doesn't reduce. Okay, 7 does go into 105, so I take 49 over 105 and divide it by 7 over 7, and that gives me the 7 over 15. Okay, because 7 times 15 is 105. All right, so 7 over 15 would be your answer. Okay, they didn't want two of them. They just wanted you to reduce that one to simplest form. Okay, now... When you have equivalent fractions, for example, um, the first one up here, 32 over 72, 32 over 72 is equal to 4 over 9, okay? Well, if you take and you multiply across like this, so if I take and multiply 72 times 4, that should be equal to 32 times 9. Okay? If they're truly equivalent fractions, okay, if they are equivalent, then they're cross products should be equal. Okay? So if I take 72 times 4, what do I get when I multiply 72 times 4? You should be able to do that in your head. Yeah, 288. So what do you get when you multiply 32 times 9? Two hundred and eighty eight. Nine times nine times two is eighteen, carrier one, nine times three is twenty seven plus one be two eighty eight. Okay? So that does check and so they are equivalent. Okay? Now when we're comparing fractions to see if they are equivalent. Okay, the cross multiplication the cross multiplication is one way to do it. Okay, another way to do it is if we take two fractions, 14 over 21 and 24 over 36. If you will simplify the fractions, it'll tell you whether or not they're equivalent. In other words, if you'll reduce them to lowest terms or simplest form, they it will show you it will show you whether or not they're equivalent. So 
What can I reduce 14 over 21 by? 7. So if I divide 7 into the top and into the bottom, I get what? 2 over 3. Now, over here, what can I reduce 24 by over 36 by? 9 goes into 24? 12. Okay. 12 goes into 24 two times. 12 goes into 36 three times. These are equal, so therefore they are equivalent. And that's what you write, equivalent. Okay, so do these two fractions on your own? Nope. 45 over 54 and 8 over 18. Yes. Tell me whether or not they are equivalent. All right, who has the answer? You'll need to work faster. Tristan, are they equivalent? They are not equivalent. Okay. What did you get for 45 over 54 when you reduced it? Cross multiply it. Yeah, need to reduce it. What did you get, Matt? 5 over 6. What did we get for the other fraction when you reduced it, Annie? No. Amira. Four over nine. Okay, so those two are not equal. So therefore, you would write not equivalent. Then it would be wrong because no is not equivalent to no. Huh? No. Not equivalent. Tell whether they are equivalent. Not tell whether they're equal. Matt? So on this one, like on the first number, is there going to be, should you try to start on the first number? Or should you try to start on the first number? Like on the same number? Like do the 45 over 54? Right. Like should you try to do it on the other number? Try to do nine? Yeah, it's not going to it's not going to divide by nine. It would have to be the same same fraction. So you're obviously on these. You know, we reduce by nine here, and we reduce by two over here. So when you're dealing with two separate fractions, you don't have to divide by the same number. You have to divide by the same number within the same within the same fraction. But yeah, if you were going to divide by nine to both of them, that's then they're going to have to be the same fraction which they're obviously not, then it would, you'd obviously know they were. Um, let's look at one other one of those, 56 over 196 and 132 over 462. Oh, not 4,622. Okay, um, now, 
obviously a little harder, okay? Um, you may end up having to reduce these more than once, okay? You may not get the very first time um, what their, you know, what their greatest common factor is. Um, bottom line is with 56 and 196, both of them are reducible by four, okay? They may be reducible more than that, but I know they're reducible by four. Okay, so if I divide 4 into 56, what do we get? 14. What about 196? Forty-nine, that's close, yeah, that is right, good, 49. Okay, now, can I reduce 14 over 49? By what? 7. So I'm going to divide by 7, and that gives you 2 sevenths. So that's reduced to lowest terms, or simplified, or simplest form. Okay, now over here, uh, 4 doesn't go into them, unfortunately. 8 go into them? No, 8 doesn't go into them. 2, well, yeah, obviously 2. Um, if you do 2, that's going to give you 66 on top and 231 on bottom. Is that right? Okay. Now, 3 goes into it. So 3 goes into it. 22 times, and that would be 777 times. Eleven goes into it, and that goes two sevenths. Huh? Where did I get what for from? Oh, because where I got the 4 over 4 was, if I look at the last two digits of the number, and if 4 goes in the last two digits, 4 will go into the number. And I know 4 times 14 was 56. I know that 4 goes into 96, so 4 has to go into both of those numbers. So 2 sevenths and 2 sevenths, so they are equivalent. Okay, they're equivalent because both of those are the same. Okay, so obviously those are a little bit more difficult. Okay, now the thing that you need to understand is you can always do this. Okay, you can always prime factor them. That would be 2, 66, 2, 33. 3 and 11. Then over here you go 2, 1, oh, excuse me, 231, 2 into that. We said goes what? Uh, no, 2 doesn't go in that, excuse me, 3 goes into that. 3 goes into that, 7, 7, and 11. Okay, now you're there. There, there. That's what you can take. 2 times 3 is 6, so you could have reduced it straight off the bat by 66. That's the greatest common factor between those two, between the top and bottom of that fraction. Okay, so you can always figure it out that way. You will also notice here that over here I have a 2 left and a seven left, which means that's going to be my fraction, two over seven. Okay, so you can do that as well. The problem you got when we start reducing by so many different things, you got a better chance of making a mistake. Okay, because so the first thing we reduced by was two over two, and so every time I divide, 
that just gives me another opportunity to make a mistake. Okay? So that's why I highly suggest trying to find the greatest common factor instead of just taking and start dividing by two. Okay? Um, like over here, the number you could have reduced by was 28. Okay? I knew that, but I knew y'all probably wouldn't, so I didn't start with 28. All right? So that's how you tell whether a fraction is equivalent or not. All right, now, let's look at this one, um, 84 over 96, and they want two equivalent fractions. Okay, now, here's what I'm going to suggest, okay? When the fractions are this large, go ahead and reduce it first. Okay? Reduce it first. So first of all, reduce 84 over 96. Okay? What will go into 84 and 96 both? Don't do that. That's what I just said. Don't just sit there and start reducing it by two. Try to find the greatest common factor. Yeah, 12. So reduce it by 12. So 84, so I'm going to divide 12 into the top and bottom. Remember, this, those fractions you reduce by have to be equal to 1. 12 over 12 is 1. So 12 goes into 84 seven times. 12 goes into 96 eight times. Now, that's your first fraction. Now, since the fractions are so large, let's go ahead and take 7 over 8 for the second fraction and multiply 7 over 8 by 2 over 2. Okay? And so that's 14 over 16. Now, those two fractions are the two equivalent fractions. No, no, no. If you reduce 14 over 16, you're going to end up with 7 over 8. Oh, yeah. And therefore, you don't have two fractions. You have one fraction. Okay? Yeah, well, the ones the ones that you're going to do here, 33 through 37, do this on. Because if I take 2 times 84, I'm going to get 168. 2 times 96, I'm going to get uh, 192. So you're dealing with a lot larger fractions. Okay, this way you don't have to deal with the large fraction. Okay, so do this one on your own. 54 54 over 168. I want two equivalent fractions. Okay, but do it the way we just did it. So there's two sets of these in the homework tonight. One of them, I haven't decided if I'm going to give you all of them or not. All right, Derek. Okay, so the first fraction, 9 over 28, that's your reduced fraction. Okay, what did you get for the second one? Yeah, 18 over 56. So you take 9 over 28 and multiply it by 2 over 2. Okay, and that's where you get the 18 over 56. 
So both of these are your answer. Okay, now Derek, on the 9 over 28, did you reduce it by 2 and then by 3, or did you reduce it by 6? By 6. All right, thank you. He reduced it by 6, okay? As I look at 54, you know, the common factor that I know is 54 is 9 times 6, okay? So you want to see if one of those goes into 168. If it does, then obviously you re can reduce it by that, okay? So he took 54 over 168 and divided top and bottom by 6. And that's how he got the reduced version of 928, okay? So your homework is 4.3... And it is 13, 14 through 37, 38, excuse me, 14 through 38. Okay, that is due tomorrow. You do have class tomorrow. Tomorrow we do not have chapel, okay, because uh, they're taking the PSAT in the cafeteria, the sophomores and juniors. Okay, so... Tomorrow I don't have chapel, so you'll have regular schedule, first, second, third hour, all that. Um, tomorrow we will have a quiz over Chapter 4, okay, so far that we've learned. So 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, we will take a, a quiz in class tomorrow over those sections. Amira? It was uh, 33 through 37. Yeah, 33 through 37. 